Hey there, and welcome to Utility Sports. Today we will be doing a lottery NBA mock draft here for the 2020 NBA draft. This is uh, Sunday, three days before the NBA draft. Uh, and this is going to be a mock on what we would personally do if we were the GM of each team. Uh, so we will be alternating. Um, Austin will be drafting odd numbers and I will be drafting even numbers today. Uh, so just a reminder that uh, at pick one, we're probably not gonna have a guy that's actually gonna go one and we're aware of that. We are just mocking what we would do based on what our big boards look like uh, and what we think about the certain players. So just please keep that in mind as we uh, go through this year. All right, Austin, you're on the clock here with one and the Minnesota Timberwolves. So for the first overall pick, I'm going to have Denny Adia going here. Um, for me personally, he's the best player in the class. Um, he's going to be a um, – he might end up being the primary playmaker with that Minnesota offense. Um, he's a guy that can uh, – play make for a lot of other players and create opportunities. Uh, he's a, definitely the guy that I think has the highest ceiling in the class. He kind of has a little bit of uh, Luka vibes to his game in terms of overall play style. I really love the fit to Minnesota at one. Great. And now moving on to uh, the Golden State Warriors at pick two, I believe uh, the player I am going to mock here is actually uh, very likely to go at this spot as well. I'm going to be taking James Wiseman. And I think it makes all the sense in the world. Uh, they need a uh, big center, someone who can protect the rim, uh, and he's going to give them a you know a real upgrade over Kevon Looney as a screen and roll dive type player, uh, and he's also got some potential to uh, really grow into a really nice uh, piece for them moving forward. All right, Austin, into pick three with the Charlotte Hornets. So for the for the Charlotte Hornets here, it's all about um, taking who will who you think will propel your franchise, and that's Lamelo Ball. Um, he's the guy that's going to put fans in the stands. It's much more than just a basketball thing for Charlotte. You're trying to re recreate your image. You're trying to build a brand. Charlotte hasn't had an identity through the entirety of its franchise. So taking Lombella Ball is much, much bigger than basketball. But from a basketball perspective, um, he, he makes quite a bit of sense. It, it's kind of tough because, you know, arguably two of their best players are point guards. So maybe they could look to move that. Um, but you shouldn't make a move uh, to not take a, a – primary ball handler just because you already have two guards on the roster when you're picking this high those guys have to be expendable yep definitely and now moving into pick four the Chicago Bulls here uh would be pretty ecstatic to see Anthony Edwards still on the board I believe and that's where I'm going to go uh Edwards is a really uh NBA ready wing he's going to be able to come in score 17 points a game or so immediately I think he's going to be able to be a guy who grows into a 20 point per game score uh albeit somewhat inefficient um, he's got an NBA-ready body, uh, really athletic kid, and I think uh, he's got a pretty high ceiling, and I'm pretty sure the Bulls would be happy here at four with that selection. All right, jumping into five here, Austin. Yeah, so for pick five in the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm going to have them going Obi Toppin. Um, Obi's actually going to be able to stay in Ohio, which is really convenient for him. He's going to be um, a screen and roll guy. He's going to be able to space to the corner. Um, makes a lot of sense for the Cavs. Uh, honestly, arguably – uh, the best player on the board at this point. Um, Obi Toppins, you know, will be a pretty okay fit alongside of um, Garland and Sexton. I think it makes a lot of sense for them to take uh, the three, potentially four, um, in terms of a play style. Yeah, moving on to pick six here, I think Atlanta is going to be looking to address best player available. And to me, the best player available at this point is Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, he's a combo guard, uh, six foot five, really good wingspan. And I think he'd fit really well next to Trey Young. Uh, he's got a lot of shooting potential, can really stretch the floor out, um, out to the break even, um, or the, uh, the hash actually rather. Uh, and I think he's going to be an all around good shooter. I think he's also going to be able to take some playmaking, uh, struggle, uh, stress off of Trey Young, uh, as he's a really solid playmaker, him and Trey Young would be one of the best playmaking backcourts together. Uh, and he also gives them some defensive versatility, which is much needed uh, as defensively last year, they were really, really uh, poor uh, in that area. Moving into seven here, Austin. Uh, so for seven, we're going to have the Detroit Pistons taking Devin Vassell um, from Florida State. He's, he's a wing that the, that Detroit desperately needs. Um, obviously, they, they have to improve you know, their entire roster, and I, we can expect a lot of movement out of them. But Honestly, at this point, you could argue Devin Vassell is the best player. I think he's severely underrated, um, th has three-level scoring potential. Um, ob obviously, people were a little nervous about his pre-draft um, pre uh, shooting video that came out, which kind of scared them. The shot looked com completely different than from the season, but uh, he confirmed that that is not actually how his shot is looking right now. 
Yeah, and moving into pick eight here, the New York Knicks are on the clock with uh, Tom Thibodeau as their head coach now. Uh, this is their first selection since hiring him, obviously. Uh, and Tom Thibodeau is best known for his defense, and I think that would make a lot of sense here to address the defensive side of the ball. They need a lot of help on that end of the floor. Uh, and why not go get Isaac Okoro, the guy who I believe is the best defender in the class. Uh, he's going to have the tools to switch out to ones um, out in space. He's going to be able to play probably one through four defensively. Uh, and he's got really good athleticism on that end of the floor. Keeps himself in plays. Uh, you know, really uh, is a hard worker from what I know about him and what I've heard about him. Uh, and he's going to be a guy that's going to uh, be a good locker room guy for the Knicks as well. And I think he's uh, going to be part of turning that culture around there. All right, Austin, into pick nine. So for pick nine in the Washington Wizards, we're going to have Anieka Konwu go. Um, Washington really could use a center at this point. You're going to kind of slot him next to, obviously, John Wall, Bradley Beal, uh, Hachimura. I think it makes a lot of sense to get this undersized five because, um, I mean, guys like Bam Adebayo, it worked out. And I, I think he's kind of got a similar skill set as Bam. Yeah, kongu has got a, a really good skill set there moving forward. And I think the Wizards would love that at nine. Looking at the Suns here at 10, uh, to me, uh, assuming I can't get a Chris Paul trade done, I really feel like I need to address the backcourt uh, point guard position. Long-term, obviously, Ricky Rubio will be there for two more seasons. But I think after that, you know, you kind of need to transition to a player that's going to give you some scoring threat while still being a quality playmaker. And to me, that's Kyra Lewis Jr. here. I think he's a really, really um, solid player. I think he get, uh, has a lot to give as a dynamic scorer. He's really, really fast. Um, and that's going to be um, something to note on him is he's got an elite skill, which is his speed, especially with the ball in his hands. And he's going to be a transition nightmare for a lot of defenses. And I think uh, putting him next to Booker makes a lot of sense uh, to really, you know, uh, upgrade that backcourt long term. All right. And to pick 11 here for the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, so I have Aaron Nesmith going here to the Spurs. Um, they definitely need some shooting on that Spurs team. That's something that they did not have enough of this year. And I think he's a great fit considering he shot so well this past season in um, limited amount of work. So his numbers might be a little skewed, but he was arguably one of the best college shooters from this past season. Yep. Moving into the Kings here at 12. Uh, the Kings are an interesting team to kind of be picking 12 here. They have like a pretty, you know, complete roster at this point in terms of, you know, they've got players at every position that are, you know, solid players, but uh, a lot of them might be wanting out. Uh, there's some rumors that Heald wants out. Bogdanovich might have a market in free agency. Harrison Barnes could be on his way out. Uh, so it's kind of hard here to really find a true fit for them. Um, at this point, I'm going to mock Patrick Williams. He's going to be a guy who's going to play on the wing. I think he's got a lot of upside defensively, and he's a really good athlete. Um, and he's kind of – he's not going to be a guy that really transforms the franchise, but I think he could come in uh, and give some versatility in the front court, uh, whether that be a three or four. Into pick 13 now. Yeah, so with this selection here, um, obviously there, there's a number of ways that the Pelicans can go, but we're going to actually opt to have them select uh, Sadiq Bey here. Um, he's going to be a 3 and D wing. Uh, he's about five down on your screen. Um, he's going to be a 3 and D wing, a, a guy that has shot very well from the college tree this past year, gives you great size at six foot eight. Honestly, the Pelicans just need a little bit more shooting and to have a have a three and D wing here that's you know still pretty quality at this point. Um, I think the Pelicans would be very, very happy selecting him. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good pick there for the Pelicans at 13. And and into the final pick here of the lottery. Um, before I tell you guys this pick, I just want to remind everyone to like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for viewing our content. We're trying to, you know, uh, put out as much content as we can, especially at a high quality level of content. Uh, and we will be having a final realistic NBA mock coming out on Tuesday this week, right uh, the day before the NBA draft. Uh, so be sure to stay in tune for that uh, because we'd love to have you guys uh, see what we think will actually happen uh, opposed to what we would do. Uh, but moving into 14 here now, what I would do if I was uh, Danny Ainge in the Boston Celtics is I would go get uh, guard Tyrell Terry out of Stanford. Uh, the guy can absolutely shoot uh, the lights out of a gym. Uh, he's got really good uh, shooting potential, uh, both off the ball, just standing and catching and shooting, but also being used as a uh, guy to run off screens and catch and shoot on the move. Uh, also has some uh, of the ability necessary to shoot off the dribble himself. And I think he could be a long-term uh, backup option for Kemba Walker while he's still there. And then uh, ultimately at some point replace Kemba Walker, especially once they have to start committing money to Tatum and Brown. Uh, to uh, help them avoid the luxury tax and uh, the hard cap. 
I think Terry could really uh, be a beneficial player. And I think early on, too, he would really fit well next to Marcus Smart coming off the bench. And I think that would be one of the best backcourts we've ever seen coming off the bench, to be honest, in NBA history. Over uh, Looking back at our mo- at our lottery mock here, I think that, um, you know, some of this, obviously, Avdia won't go one. And, uh, you know, LaMelo Ball probably won't fall to three um, type stuff. But I think that uh, based on what we would do here, I, I really like this for a lot of these teams. I think this addresses a lot of needs. Uh, Austin, do you have any comments here on on kind of what, where we had go and who went? No, it's unfortunate that's not going to fall this way because they're um, – <clears throat> honestly, I think we, we did the best job that we could, like assessing the players. And I think there are some players that are being overvalued by NBA teams. Um, guys like R.J. Hampton very well could be around that pick 12 to 14 range. is a little scary. We don't believe in, in him as a prospect. Um, Killian Hayes is another guy that um, people really, really believe in, and he could go as high as, you know, possibly anywhere from four to, um, you know, the back end of the lottery. So that's another guy you have to consider that might get overdrafted. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be an interesting uh, draft this year. Honestly, there's no like true number one. I think we're both pretty set that LaMelo will go one to the Wolves. Um, But outside of that, it's kind of all up for grabs. Obviously, the Warriors could be still looking to move that pick. Uh, so I think it'll be a really fun draft to watch, and I think it'll uh, kind of help shape the league for the next few years, too, with some of these guys who are going to come in and be starting level players almost immediately. Thank you guys for watching. We really enjoyed it. Uh, again, uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new, and hit that bell uh, to get notifications for all of Utility Sports content, and we'll see you in the next video.